knowledge about himself, and he was, I'm sure, on a greater maturity track than any of us would ever hope to be. But they couldn't accept it, that he was the Messiah. And Jesus said, a prophet's not without honor, except in his own town, or among his own family, or among his own people. So, I have, I have popularity wherever I go, but when I come home, it's not so great. Maybe that's a way to keep you humble, too, you know? Uh, maybe we should have more of that among our movie stars and politicians and things. Maybe they should come home and get a little humility once in a while. Amen? Amen. <laughs> but Jesus was hoping, I think, for a better reaction. The people disappointed him. And one of the scriptures say he could do no great work there because of the unbelief. Because of the unbelief. I remember when I uh, became a pastor and uh, some of my friends uh, from school knew about it. And they, some were, weren't surprised at all and some were very surprised. And then when I got appointed to Van Buren, which was near Finley where I grew up, uh, some of my friends came out to hear me. And afterwards, they just came and they said, Benny, that was so fun. <laughs> Never came back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was just bad to that. You know, I was Benny. You know? And, uh, you know, I don't know why you're doing this gig, but, you know, wow, you know. They didn't understand what had happened to me with a calling. And, you know, they weren't there to go through it with me. They just, wow, a preacher? Cool, you know. We thought we'd come here and get a, get a chuckle. Eventually, after several years, others came out and some of them stayed. That really made me feel good. And, uh, but boy, I felt that little bit of rejection or at least humor when you come back and you're somebody different than what you were before. And uh, people aren't quite sure what to do with you. Well, Jesus met that in a big way. In fact, he, by the time... Uh, the whole meeting was over and Jesus was trying to leave town. Uh, the crowd followed him and grabbed him and they were took him to the edge of the cliff and they were going to shove him off the cliff and kill him. It says it right there in the Gospel of Luke. They took him to the precipice, the edge of the cliff. And there's big cliffs in Nazareth. And they looked down on the valley of Jezreel. Or we know it as the Valley of Armageddon. That's where Jesus grew up, right there. And they took him there and threw him off. And then it just says, but then he escaped from their grip and got away. As he always seemed to do, except when the time was right. And he gave himself as a sacrifice for us all. And it went to the cross. But how interesting. Jesus is accepted everywhere but in his home. And there they just say, you're just a human being just like any of us, and we don't see any messiahship in you. It gets to the heart of the matter, I guess, because that's a great story, but what's it got to do with us? And I think what it has to do with us is we all have to make a decision about Jesus. Is he just one of the guys? Is he just a human being? Is he just somebody that had a mother, brothers and sisters, and nothing special, nothing God-related, nothing Messiah, nothing saving? Who is Jesus for you? Who, who, who does he represent to you? What does he mean in your life? Is he really the Messiah that Isaiah prophesied about? If he is, then he's King of Kings and he's Lord of Lords. And he should be the heart and soul and center of our lives. Amen? Amen? He should be what our world revolves around. If he is the Messiah, if he is the Son of God, and we're here to worship him and to love him, then when we leave this place, our world still should revolve around him 
And what we think and do should have meaning to it because we go from this place in his name. I think that's what this is all about. It's just like Artemis and Jesus. Who are you going to choose? Are you going to choose Jesus or the world? Now that world's pretty inviting sometimes. <laughs> we like it over there. Woohoo! And then the church says, yes, but you need to be here too. And you go up here. And then sometimes we try to be in both. And we stretch. And pretty soon you can't do that anymore. They'll make a wishbone out of you. And uh, split you in two. And you can't do that. You have to make a choice. And I don't know if it has to be the church against the world. But somehow we need to be the church in the world. We need to be the church in the world. If we say we're against it, then we won't have anything to do with it. We won't help those in need. We won't reach out to those around us. It's us against them. And I don't think that's the way God wants it to be. I think we need to be the people of God in the world. Taking compassion, care, and love, and the message of Jesus Christ out with us, and the message of hope and healing to people. And isn't that what Jesus really came to do and calls us to do? Bring about the kingdom of God. And the people who heard Jesus in his hometown, they couldn't buy it. They couldn't see beyond the limitations of their own eyes. They weren't able to make the leap of faith to say that Jesus was something greater. It took others to experience Jesus as he was for the first time, to experience healing and, and his words and his power, and not to have any blinders on or preconditions about him. And they came to him and said, my Savior and my God. And they came to him in living faith. And I hope that's what we do too. I hope that that's what we do too. The people of Nazareth uh, were blessed to have Jesus grow up among them. And yet they rejected him. They couldn't understand. I pray that though we, in many ways, all of our lives have known Jesus, that we don't get so comfortable with him or that we don't get so complacent about him that we forget him. In the book of Revelation, the letters to one of the churches, the angel says to the church, don't forget your first love. Don't forget the first love of Jesus that you have. Don't lose the fire. Don't lose the passion for Jesus. Don't lose the passion for the church. Don't let just repetition or don't just let it become a habit. That's what it's getting at. Don't forget your first love. As a church, let us resolve to always make Jesus our first love. And to grow in that love and to let it come to all of our relationships. Husband and wife, children, family, neighbors, community, world. But let it start with Jesus. Because after all, if he is the Son of God, if he is the Messiah, as we say he is, then that should make all the difference.